Welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot, and in this episode, today, we're going to talk about how lazy I am as a human being. That's pretty lazy, I'm not going to lie. I am lazy. If you look at my video upload schedule, you'll be able to tell. This is airbrush paint. This is Createx, two fluid ounces. And you got to shake it. Shake it to mix it. And I said, man, that is taxing. Like, can you guys see my whole body's moving? I almost pulled something. We're going to take this and we're going to mix it without actually having to move our bodies. Genius. Uh, yeah, this is like version four right now. And I'm going to use this little thing called an econ motor. It's actually from Robot Zone. The number is 638398. It's a 227 RPM motor, so that means the shaft spins 227 times in in a minute. Uh, that was the lowest speed I had for that type of motor, so that's why we threw it in this thing. But anyway, you can see this. There's It consists of a base here. There's a base. It's got these 45-degree uh, shafts here. Those are all going to 608 bearings. These little guys here. Right meow. Right meow. So those are just standard bearings. They're at 45 degrees. I know that you know ball bearings. Uh, this you know this is kind of like a, however you say that torsion load or something. It's not an actual like. These should be at 90 degrees for the load on bearings. That's how bearings work. But you know what? You can buy 608 bearings, like a hundred of them, for like ten dollars. That's why I got them lying all over. So that's why they're here. But you can see this. I'll try and remove some of these. So you see kind of what we're working with. There's just a shaft right here at 45 degrees. It's got a little bit of its own kind of bushing right there. So the the bearing just stays at that uh, position. And then those are at, at 45 degrees. A carriage that holds the paint bottle itself is right in here. That carriage is cut at 45 degrees. I will remove these so you can see what I'm talking about we'll get rid of the bearings so the carriage itself is is stuck at 45 degrees it's cut there so then that rolls in on these bearings that helps also to keep the carriage in line because at 45 degrees it won't be able to pull out and it won't be able to uh, pull up rather so you won't have the carriage move up because the bearings are holding it in here with friction I like that a lot because I didn't want it to fly out all over the place. The carriage itself also, I put in these little uh, spacers here so you could put a hook and loop fabric on there, also known as Velcro if you'd like to. The bottle itself just rests in a cutout of itself essentially from the carriage. So I started the carriage out by just modeling the bottle and then cutting the bottle out of the carriage. You know, so, you know, scale up the bottle slightly, cut it out of the carriage, and there you go. You got a place for the bottle. Pretty simple design on a carriage standpoint. Then I just decided to hook it up with a shaft and a flywheel, essentially. So we have this flywheel at the end of the motor. It's stepped up to be the same length of the carriage, or height as the carriage, rather. And then that is just a 50 millimeter flywheel because I wanted this to have about 46 millimeters of throw or so, so just under two inches. That shaft comes up with every rotation. You got about uh, eight millimeters diameter of the flywheel here, about eight millimeters, four on either side to the center. So that means we're throwing about 42 millimeters with G with each movement. Seems to work out pretty well so far. Uh, I put these little spacers down on here. These are just kind of flaps. These are where you can clamp it down to a surface. Uh, because this gear motor then is sticking out below the, f the lowest portion of the base, got to have this off of a table or something like that which is fine seems to be working out all right so far i also modeled in a little bit more structural support here i had one model where this just kind of came up like this and stopped at the motor motor was flexing around a lot you can see that here i will try to get this back you could see how this was the original setup and you can see how that motor flexes around a little bit this is out of petg and uh printed at 100% but it still has a little bit of flex so on this second model here the version I guess 4 it is now I beef this up and I also made it 
to where right here on the front is going to be a spot for a button. So it's a complete, uh, what do you call that, complete circuit kill switch button, something like that. It just completes the circuit. You can see there uh, it's 12 volts to this motor. So it, I just put in a plug that is uh, one of those uh, LED light strip plugs, essentially. Put that in there. Wired that up to there and there. So this just cuts power. All right. Just cuts power, cuts the positive, turns positive back on. So what that new model is doing now is it's moving this up to here, ish, somewhere in there, you know, and that's where the button's going to be on the new model. So I'll show you a little bit more on that. So that's where that button's going to be. So you can hit that on the front. Um, these tabs, I think I'd be better suited maybe to put a hole in here as well so you could clamp it down or you could screw it down to a bench either way. I don't have anything really permanent decided with that. They do come off quite easily, but with the carriage on, they do not uh, come off easily. And I also like the fact that they're, they can move kind of like this. That seems to give a lot of play in the carriage, and even though they do give a little bit like that, it doesn't come off because of uh, all of them acting in sequence, essentially, when it moves across. Overall, really happy with it. Uh, nothing that I would really say, you know, going wrong at all so far. Uh, I print the flywheel in 100%. I print the carriage in 10% infill. I print uh, the base at 10% until I hit this area. I switch it with variable settings in uh, Simplify 3D, hashtag not sponsored. I switch it off in variable settings right here, and then I print 100% over that. I'll probably just print in 100% the next time it goes around because I do know it actually works. So what's the point, you know? Might as well print it in 100%. You don't save that much time, 10% to 100. So the top of the motor here, these are actually M2.5 which is kind of a weird size. I had to special order these. Uh, you could also try and take these screws out and put them back in. Uh, I don't know. I haven't tested if that would actually work, but this is a three millimeter thick portion. So if you just get like a six millimeter screw, it works out quite well. So those, again, those are M two and a half, I think 45 or something like that uh, by six millimeters. So Working out pretty well so far. So the power plant for it is actually right here. Uh, this is just your standard AC adapter. See if I can get it to focus on that. There you go. Standard AC adapter, 12 volt out by 5 amps. Uh, this is just, you know, you can find this everywhere and anywhere. Uh, I get a lot of these based on the, uh, that's just the end I'm using. I get, I use a lot of these for LED light strips. So that's why I have a bunch of these stacked around the house. I also, when they come on sale on random, like if I find them on eBay or something, I'll buy them for five bucks just to have a bunch of these because they're very handy. The uh, flip side for that is if you have like a shed, you know, that you work at without any power or anything, you could always hook this up to a car battery. I'm sure that motor would run days on a car battery. So you could always do that and that would work. Uh, but for now, I'm just using that power plant. For now, we're using these uh, two ounce paint bottles. Uh, I have a couple that are a little bit bigger. If anybody has smaller ones or a little bit bigger or something like that, they, they would like a specific carriage for, let me know. Uh, send me some measurements. I'll model it up for you. And this one could cut it out or cut it in. I might try and do a bigger model for this, but I think this carriage could probably handle quite a bit bigger bottle just going to have to try and figure out how to put that on to the carriage itself so that might be in the future but these are our basic standards i have like 30 or 40 colors in just this so i figured why you know why change it if we can use this so so far it's working out pretty well um you know i figured why not there's a lot of these versions on thingiverse for uh like putting on a sawzall which works quite well they just snap onto the blade and you just let it go uh, so like a reciprocating saw 
You just put it on the blade and then let it shake. That works out quite well, but I just thought I'd have a little fun with this project, do something a little bit different, and show you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, you found it educational in some way. Uh, this will be relevant to uh, 3D printed lures because I have been doing a lot of airbrushing to the hard baits. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. And if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Maybe give it a like. This is YouTube. I got to show myself. And please, until the next one, keep your amps up and wash your hands.